Hello, my name is Didier Trasinovic. Today, the committee members for the IEC 61511 standards are meeting here in London. The standard is currently under maintenance and the members are going to discuss national committee's comments as well as individual and proposed changes to the standard. In addition, this meeting covers key technical issues and the subjects are hardware fault tolerance, clause 12, seal 4, safety manuals and PFD calculations. Safety Users Group prepared a series of questions that deals with topics we thought you would find of interest. We invited a number of participants who represent various profiles within the industry to answer these questions. Now, let's go and meet up with those experts who accepted the invitation to be interviewed. Yeah, the, the standard is, the uh, key principle for the standard was based on the terminology, the safety life cycle, and some semi-quantitative features out of IEC 61508. With that, uh, the other basis was a lot of existing national and international standards and organizations that uh, have good engineering practices in that area. Yes, some of the key principles which are actually common between IEC 61508 and IEC 61511 go back to good practice standards in the ICI company in the UK that were translated into guidelines published by the Health and Safety Executive here, so-called Programmable Electronic Systems Guidelines or the PES Guidelines, published I think first in 1985. Two other publications that uh, we used uh, for preparation of this was the uh, ISA SP84, which had existed, and the CCPS, a book, which was published uh, before this came out with some of the same principles. Um, a lot of the principles were used by um, major engineering companies, certainly here in the UK and I think in the US. Um, but embedding them into a, an internationally recognized standard has um, demonstrably improved safety, not least because of improved communications between control and instrumentation professionals and process safety professionals. It's provided a, a common language and um, Certainly the principles of the standard are, are discussed at the high, highest levels in my own organization. Um, this is entirely due to the um, visibility given by the standard. What I'd like to add to that, uh, Simon, is uh, the introduction of safety integrity levels was at that time, I think, something new, at least to the European process industry and it allowed to design uh, safety instrumented functions uh, to a level which would be fit for, for fit for purpose. That means that uh, uh, the, the endless debate on is this good enough and do we need to do more, etc., could become semi-quantified and we could, let's say, focus our attention to the functions which really deserve attention and away from all the others. And uh, we could, by applying these techniques, indeed, uh, uh, provide fit for purpose safety and uh, remove complexity where they were not necessary. And uh, that was a, a novelty in, uh, in, in these days. I'd like to uh, mention also that the manufacturers were uh, encouraged to, to manufacture more reliable equipment to improve the safety and also uh, to uh, have opportunities for diagnostics within the equipment. So we put a lot of efforts as Emerson to include uh, uh, programs for more reliability and more diagnostics in the products. Well, we're always looking at the pulse of uh, the process industry to understand if this work that we've been doing is, is having any benefit. And we were pleased to see in a recent uh, electronic publication by the United States uh, National Society of Professional Engineers that they've seen a reduction in process sector uh, problems. And in that article, they attributed to the standards like 61511 as a contributing to reduction in safety hazards and safety problems in the process sector.
They do use it as a framework uh, because it has a safety life cycle and uh, I do feel that the professionals in the U.S. I can speak for with the major companies are using IEC 61511. Uh, the smaller companies I think are struggling with it and I think they're seeking uh, help from uh, full service contractors that have the expertise and know what's in the standard to help them design their systems. In, the, in Europe, that all the all the oil major, all the major process industries are uh, are really um, uh, working towards compliance with 61511 and sharing best practices and uh, and ideas about that. And also within Shell uh, around the world, uh, we try to uh, comply with 61511 as much as we can. Uh, yes, we certainly see that uh, professionals in the UK, both in chemical plants and our offshore oil and gas installations, are working to comply with IEC 61511. There is a, a range of uh, understanding. Um, some have a very good understanding. Others do only see perhaps some of the basic requirements of the standard. So uh, there is still some way to go in training and improving the competency um, amongst uh, some of the professionals who are using the standard. Uh, well, my experience is that the professionals that I know are thrilled to have the standard because uh, it now gives uh, the chemical engineer, the instrument engineer, the electrical engineer, uh, the hazard and risk analysis expert, a common language that they can talk to with each other, and it's uh, just brought a better understanding of each other's problems and uh, solutions, so they're, they're thrilled to have it, especially when we give them performance-based information as opposed to prescriptive uh, solutions. Mm -hmm.